Welcome to WSJU Radio St. John's University. We have the one and only, the godfather of St. John's. He is St. John's royalty, Coach Lou Carnesecca. Coach Lou, how are you doing? Okay, I'm fine, fine. <laughs> I'm here, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we love you up here, Lou. You're very loved up here, and I'm pretty sure you miss St. John's. Well, in all my life, I got there in 47. And I've been involved with them ever since. And it's probably been one of the greatest things that could have happened to me. You've got to be pretty happy about the team right now. I'm very fortunate. Not only because of what the business and the father told us, but I think the people we met, the, and, uh, we're still friends, the ones that are still alive. So there's a great feeling at St. John's. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I'm glad that I attended, you know. I know I went to Florida, you know, for about three weeks or four weeks. Yep. But then Danny Buckley came. I took him over to St. John's. And, of course, that was the best thing I ever did. That's right. And people may not know that about you attending Fordham. How do you feel about the team right now? you got to be pretty ecstatic. Oh, I, I just got off speaking with, the, with Mike. It was a, I would say it wasn't an, uh, an Emmy last night. It was beautiful. It wasn't a Saturday yet. We'll probably get that soon. But it was a great, great performance. You know, you know all aspects: passing, defense, offense, shooting, uh, energy. It's, I was very happy to see them, really. And uh, we got, we're going to cause a lot of trouble. I oh mean, yeah, basketball wise, <laughs> <laughs> and the lobs were something that were great to see. St. John's basketball is finally back, in. the fans are ecstatic oh, right thank now. God, yeah, I think we, you know, basketball is so important to St. John. Yep, it's part of it. Don't forget, back in the thirties, St. John's was a little school in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and. Because of the basketball team, we played all these big universities in Madison Square Garden. And then people said, well, gee, there must be, if they can compete against them and play against them, that must be a pretty good place. Yeah. And really, basketball had something to do with our advancement over the years. And we're very proud of that legacy. We're very proud of that tradition. And go away too from Buck Freeman down to Joe Latchick, Frank McGuire, and all those fellas. You know, then we've had a great tradition. What did it mean to you when you found out that St. John's University named the arena after you, Carnesecca Arena? Uh, <laughs> I was so happy, very happy. It's, it's wonderful. You know, I it's wonderful to have that. And I feel honored, humbled. This. I mean, I was a, I forget, I was a very little used infielder. <laughs> I was more of an observer. Yeah. Okay. I watched a lot of games. <laughs> That's right. You weren't that great of a player, but you were a great observer. <laughs> <laughs> I was. And, I, and we had, we had a, that team, by the way, went to the World Series. Yeah. Well, went out to Omaha, 19, no oh God, it's got to be 50, 59 or 40, 49. Mm-hmm. You know, Jack Kais was, was the captain of that team. Tommy Tolan played first base, and, and Peanut Snow was the catcher. And only four of us, I think, left mm-hmm. of that crowd so far. Mm-hmm. Everyone so, brings up the 85 team. In those days, the, the, base, the basketball coach coached uh, coach baseball, too. Yep. Joe Lachick coached baseball, and so did Frank McGuire. Yep. And Jack Kaiser coached baseball, of course, was helping, you know, as an aide. So there was always that uh, thing where you, you work together. You're exactly right. Not everyone knows that. And the Rules had great baseball, too. You know, they did. Back over the years. And, uh, I remember playing at, at 
takes the park. Mm-hmm. You know, which was the home of the Griffiths. I don't know if they were, somebody remember that. I don't think many people will. But at the end of the season, that's when all main Eagles would come down and they'd play in these exhibition games. Mm-hmm. Guys like Mizzou and all those fellas. That's right. So they, I think San Jose's had a good tradition, both in both sports and, of course, other sports too, but those are the ones that probably had well, the front. Mm-hmm. Everyone remembers the 85 season, but the thing is, is that St. John's has always had great teams. You look at the previous years before oh, that. I'm good. Yes, I can remember. The, you don't know. I fell in love with St. John's. I went to St. Anne's Academy, mm-hmm. which was a Catholic school on the east side. Lexington Avenue, across from Lennox Hill Hospital. And no days, the Catholic schools... If the court was now, let's say there was a, a college game, Madison Square Garden would allow the Catholic schools to play a game in the afternoon. So that afternoon we played St. Simon Stock, mm-hmm. which is no longer in existence. It was a Catholic school up in the Bronx. So they gave us tickets for the game. And I remember still so clearly going to the game. And all of a sudden, as I'm sitting in my seat, here they come out. With the big red uniform and the big Indian chief, yep. <laughs> Chanel, right on that back. And I fell in love. I fell in love with, you know, with St. John's. And uh, my father wanted me to be a doctor, so I went to Florida, but I didn't. I, I didn't want, I, that was more to please my dad. But I said, Pop, I can't do this. So I went to St. I went, I switched over to St. John's. And then, was one of the best things ever did. Mm-hmm. 526 wins. Such a great accomplishment yeah. for the St. John's University. It means you had good players. Yep. I'm not, I'm not trying to give you the hope of it. To get with that many, you have to have good ball players. Mm-hmm. And we did. You did. And more, I would say they were all local. Mm-hmm. All in New York. All guys from the public schools, the county schools, private schools. That's where we got our players from. We didn't have to fly here and fly there. We had them in our backyard. And I think that's important when you get local people. Then the people in the area feel they're part of it. Yeah. And I think that's what this team, kind of two local guys like the Alexander and the kid from from uh, Rock, saw so that. Mm-hmm. It gives you that... that, that Home-like taste, you know, the hometown. And that's important. It is important. Say, this is our team. This is a team that's going to go very uh, far and is going to be... These kids look like the other... I hope they keep going because they're playing so well. They are. And, and it's great to see. I mean, people are excited here at St. John. Yeah. She has a chance for us to do something. And Michael is on a marvelous job. You know, when, when he came, I said, hey, this guy's ready made. Mm-hmm. Okay? You don't have to try him out. No. <laughs> He's been there. He reached his and 400th I, win last night. Was that it? Yep. He really, he, Holy God. Yep. But hey, when you think about it, he coached down at, uh, he coached, number one was at, at Murray State. Mm-hmm. An interesting story I would love to hear is a story that you hold to yourself about a special player at St. John's University. Because when I usually tell people where I attend, which is St. John's University, it's funny that Mullen isn't brought up the most. The player that's brought up most to me is Malik Seeley. Well, you know, I was just thinking, I just spoke to his mother, it's got to be maybe a week ago. Mm -hmm. I just spoke to Mrs. Seeley. And he probably... It's one of the quietest plays we had. Mm-hmm. You're right. He didn't get the the, the flair like, like the other guy. I think it, because he was so smooth, so quiet, they did it quietly. By the way, the first day of practice, I said, let's get basketball player. Because mm-hmm. I said, let's go to a couple of plays. And automatically, I could see that he was thinking of options. What to do? I mean, he was very 
very bright basketball player. And he did a great job. And he, and he was down the place. So it's an important part, a role in professional basketball. Mm-hmm. When this accident happened terribly. Yeah. It's, on, it's right very unfortunate. Time, yes. You're right. I absolutely right. For some reason, uh, and I think it was because of this person, I was very quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't flamboyant, so if I can use that expression. Yeah. What was it like cr- coaching Chris Mullen? He's a fan favorite at St. John's. Well, I always said my mother could have coached him. <laughs> and I don't mean that to be, you know, yeah. disparaging this way. <laughs> But he, he, he loved to play. Well, I had him as he was about five, six years old at camp. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know he's going to be good. And they'd say, well, he can't run, he can't jump. Thank God he, <laughs> he couldn't run, he couldn't jump. You <laughs> never find him. Was well, that good? Mm-hmm. Is that good of a player? One of the all time greats. He was, uh, he was a, well, you know, they talk about players, and I've had some great players. I'm talking about Rick Barry. Mm-hmm. And that's probably next to Rick. And, uh, and of course, Tony Jackson was up there, too. Yep. And so, uh, but uh, Chris was, Chris had that, had the flair, had the outside shot. Pass. Yeah. But you know, he couldn't run, he couldn't jump. I, I had to hit it all the time. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> we kill teams. Love, love. He worked at it every day. Mm-hmm. Every day. What's interesting is. A little story. Uh, the night he was going out uh, for the Olympic team last night, he was ready to go. Mm-hmm. I had to give a talk out. Long hours. So I'm coming home around 10 o'clock. I'm just getting by to my house. I, said, I bet you Chris is in the gym shoot. <laughs> Lo and behold, I drop up. The lights are on. Who's there but Terrence Mullen feeding Chris the night before? So he never stopped practicing. He loved, he loved basketball. <laughs> I had that was insatiable. He loved basketball. And he was great, you know, one of the great players. How many years did he play? 14? Yep. In the Big Ten, I think he played 14. Yeah. That's exactly right. Something that's interesting, I had Kenny Smith on my show, and he told me a story how you tried to recruit him to St. John's, and he didn't want to come because he'd be riding the bus every day when he was living in New York. Because he grew up in Queens. But he, didn't, didn't, but then he didn't have to do that, you know. He could have bought it out there. We did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a good feeling about Chris. Mm-hmm. I just had a feeling he was coming to St. John's. Why? Because he was close to his parents. He was close to a lot of people that he played ball. He felt at home. You know, mm-hmm. for him, it was just like going across the street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he makes you a smart coach, by the way. Mm-hmm. Something. I spoke to him about a week ago. Oh, you did? What, what did he say to you? I said, all right, how you doing? This and that. I was mm-hmm. just talking. He said, his daughter's going to San Diego. Oh, wow. So he's living out on the West Coast. That's and nice. I said, I used to practice there at San Diego. Up in the hill of San Diego. Uh, when I was with the Nets, mm-hmm. we played the Conquistadors. I don't know if anybody remembers the Conquistadors. Mm-hmm. The old ADA. I wanted to ask you a, a question regarding a movie called Coming to America that came out in 1988. In the movie, Eddie Murphy goes to watch St. John's at Madison Square Garden at Maris. Do you remember when they were shooting this movie? No, I don't remember at all. Yeah, because I remember I that. Don't. Coming to America, Do I remember. remember it? Yeah, it was in 19... 
88, I believe that's when it came out. 1988. And I remember in the movie, St. John's is playing Marist. Yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> At this juncture, <laughs> a lot of things that I don't remember. But oh. I no, I think I would have. I think I would have recalled that. Mm-hmm. You know, personally, the manners are way gone. Yeah. No, I don't remember. Were they clips? Was that what they were? Clips of the games or? I it Just they could it, it could have been it could have been clips, but I'm pretty sure they went to see a live game. They may not have told you that they were filming. Maybe they just went to the side and filmed the movie, and because yeah. that probably could have been the case. Yeah, the new place, uh, Saint John's was the talk of the town. You know that. Yeah, they were because yeah. the Knicks weren't doing well then. No, they weren't. And thank well, God they're well, doing well now. I think they're starting to play good ball now. His coach is good. He's been good. The guy he's coached the Bulls and all that. He's good. I was speaking with one instant two days ago, and he says, a hell of a coach. Mm-hmm. Good coach. The city is very excited right now. St. John's is doing well, and the Knicks are doing well. You can't go wrong with that. I think, you know, I think you got a club in Brooklyn. I mean, holy Yeah, you do. Those guys could explode. Yeah. <laughs> if they get them all together. Mm-hmm. You also had a time when you coached the Nets in the ABA. Oh, for three years. Yeah. The moment of madness. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, it was a great experience. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I I left St. John's. And I, you know, I think it was my ego. You got to coach in the pros. You got to coach in the pros, you know. I think it's a dream of a lot of coaches. Mm-hmm. And then I found out, you know, it wasn't for me. And especially when I lost Rick Perry. Oh. I knew it wasn't for me. <laughs> when here we went to the finals yep. of the ABA, we lost Indiana. Yeah, that's right. The finals. You know, so, yeah. Uh, we, you know, it, it was... It was a learning experience, but it wasn't for me. I miss St. John's. Mm-hmm. When was the last know, time that you? Know. When was the last time that you were at St. John's? Because I believe that you have attended some practices while Mike Anderson has been the coach. I go. To, I mean, what times? I get to St. John's once I watch a practice, you mm-hmm. know. But I, you know, especially now, I haven't been out of the house for ten. <laughs> <laughs> For 10 months. Yeah. I have to ask the warden for a pen. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a lot of people, but uh, I try to stay in touch, you know. After all, I, it's been part of my life so long. Yeah. St. John's is your home. Since, since 42, the first time I saw him, and then when I attended in 47, after I came back from the service. So it's, uh, St. John's has been my life, and, uh, and I had great teachers, mm-hmm. great, great teachers. Talk about, you know, Buck Freeman, Joe Lopchick, Frank McGuire, a guy named Bernie Red Saragic, who coached for many years, Yeshiva, who was really a hell of a coach. But because of business things, he... I never went on, but I, I learned an awful lot from it. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I'm kind of like the camps of Claire B. I think one of the things that really helped me mm-hmm. is I spent two summers at Claire B's basketball camp. Now, this was just strictly basketball. Mm-hmm. And you had basketball from 9 o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. Okay? Mm-hmm. Games scrimmages and all that kind of stuff. And we had this. I'm just going to go some of the coaches that went through there. Brad Albeck, Red Hoffman, okay? Mm. Adolf Rupp, Rudy Moore, Kenny Norton, mm. of course, Frank McGuire. Yep. And then we had the, probably the greatest drill master, Pick Piccarello. He had more drills 
I didn't, then, you know, it was unbelievable. And of course, Claire V. And of course, Buck was arrested and with me. Mm-hmm. And Buck couldn't sleep that night, so we'd walk, walk to camp, you know, and we'd talk about this. Mm-hmm. It was a real, I mean, he was. When you listen to him talk about basketball, you think it was a state senator, <laughs> white hair and all that. And he'd give you that Latin, you know, because he was yeah. <laughs> a product of the broken school system. And he says, to be a good shooter, you must have confidence. From the Latin, confidentio. And his little kids would look up to him. Fuck with son, you know. Yeah. He never, that was a, he was a, a great mind. He was. Uh, yeah, of course, he helped Coach McGuire mm-hmm. an awful lot. So I think being a, around that area with all those people, mm-hmm. I mean, some someone has to rub off. And the thing that really is, is, is how much you love basketball. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a job. Just, you know, it was yeah. 12 months. Mm-hmm. You didn't come in at 9 or 10 and go home at 2 and that's it. Mm-hmm. You had to take it what you do in the summer. You had to check on your players. Make sure they're going to summer school. Make sure they're doing this. Make sure they're doing that. So it's a, it was a full-time job. Mm-hmm. It was a big responsibility, and you and you molded yes, your players. I think I do some things better. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big responsibility, and you did it. You turned those players into men. Well, I'm very, you know, I, I would say that a lot of real fun, a lot of fine citizens. I'm really proud. Mm-hmm. I mean, they drove me crazy when they were in college, but <laughs> that's, you know, that's part of growing up. Yep, that really I, is. I, I still, we still talk to each other. We call, you know, and, that, and that's good. That's great that you still I have that bond. Guys that play for me in high school. Yeah. Like 1950. Wow. I mean, so basketball has been my life. <laughs> it has <entirely>. been. <laughs> you know. I wanted to bring up the sweater, of course. When you walk into Carnesecca Arena, you see it in the glass. Everyone remembers you for the sweater, of, of course. Well, that's something that they, they could have said a great strategist. <laughs> they reminded me for my sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes your head shrink, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, it was an amazing thing. And it was just by accident. Mm-hmm. I remember I had a cold. It was in probably January. But before that, an Italian coach, head woman's uh, coach of the Italian national team, came in and he exchanged gifts and he threw me two sweaters. So I looked at them and threw them in the, you know, in the closet. Mm. And now it's, now it's January and I had just gotten over the, the cold. Mm-hmm. So Mary says, look. Why don't you take your sweater? Those gyms are pretty drafty. You know, he's grab a sweater. So I put my hand in, took it out, and I threw it into my bag, and off I went. So I'm at, we're playing Pittsburgh. And all of a sudden, I put the sweater on. God, oh, man, it was the ugliest thing I ever saw. And the kids looked at the witness and said, where'd you get that? This is, this is a gift. So, I wore it now. The story goes on. Chris Mullen hits a jumper at the buzzer. Mm. We go on to be pit. So, after that, I had to wear the sweater. That was it. <laughs> and it was only one thing. I should have merchandised it. <laughs> instead of giving them away. That's the story of the sweater. It's true. And I still have some. <laughs> an iconic photo that does go around and people see all over the world especially basketball fans is when you're standing next to the late great john thompson and he's wearing the sweater and you're next to him uh, I, you know let me tell you what 
That's one thing upstaging me with the sweater. But when he beat me, that really hurt. Yeah. Those were great games. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Georgetown, St. John's, St. John's, uh, Syracuse games. They were just, just great, great games. Mm-hmm. The gun was jumping. Packed. I don't know if you remember. Were you there? No, I wasn't there. I've seen the highlights, though. Yeah, I wish I wish I was. <laughs> I wish I was there as a St. John's fan. I wish I was. But it was a, it was, it was exciting, you know, for the fans. Tough on the coaches, but you know, you had to put him up some, but that's okay. Where do you expect the St. John's? team to go next. We're seeing them succeed right now. They've won 14 games, or 14 and 8, and 5th in the Big East. Well, I, I, let me tell you, I think they have a good... I need to have a, I don't want to put the horns on, on poor Mike, you know. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but the whammy of, as they say, I think they stand in a very good chance of going well in the Big East tournament. Now, there, there's some tough clubs that Creighton is a great shooting team. Seeing the hall is dangerous. Mm-hmm. And of course, Little Nova, they got a great coach down there. Yeah. And you know, they don't beat themselves. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you got to beat them. I don't think he has some achievement he's had like other years. But he gets the most out of it. He does. So I, I, I think this club can do very well. And of course, it is style. You know, you you can't prepare for that two or three days before the game. Like, you know, some teams you can practice two or three days before you and the style what they do. Here, you better start the first day of practice because they're in your pocket. Mm-hmm. They look great. They look great. And this team has really oh, shocked the basketball world. It was really wonderful. I mean, it was, it was an Emmy. I thought that was an Emmy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't wait for this season, how they play the rest of the season. Is there an important message that you would love to give to the St. John's student body or the players? Well, number one, just pay attention to those things. You know, pay attention to little things. Sometimes you get involved in such big things you're thinking about, and little things kill you. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, you got to have some luck. You have good culture, we have that. Mm-hmm. And you can't, but you can't forget, you know, your opponents. I mean, they may have pretty good guns. Mm-hmm. So you gotta, you know, there's a lot of things you have to take into consideration. But I, uh, this club is dangerous. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, we, I bet a lot of teams don't want to play them. No, I don't think so. Seeing how they played last yeah. night, especially when they're dunking and lobbing all over the place. I mean, that little guy's like Alibaba. Yep. Right? I mean, he's. <laughs> You gotta close your mouth. Mm-hmm. Take a tip. He's good. And Champagne. And what happens is he's starting to distribute the ball. He's got a nice little jumper. Yep. And oh, he can drive. I mean, uh, and the kid from Lachlan, I mean, very, I mean, not flamboyant, but look up, he's got 20 points. He's got 20 points. Yep. And the kid William this has come along pretty good. Yes. He's saying this time they got a good rotation, you know. And they're only sophomores and freshmen. Mm-hmm. That's right. Let's hope they don't get any ideas about going pro. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of these guys. You gotta keep them at St. John's so they bring a, bring that title to us. I mean that's it. You gotta listen, listen well. That's right. Look, if you're good, they'll come for you.
you. You don't have to go to them. I forget that. <laughs> You're good. They'll come to you. Max, I don't know what, what you wanted, but I hope you got what you wanted. Yes, Coach Lou, I want to thank you for coming on the show here today. It was a great honor. Thank you for everything you did for St. John's. No, and for no, it's always good. Let's wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, Coach okay. Lou. I want you right, to take care you. and stay safe. We'd love to have you back. If say if the Saint if Saint John's goes deep, we'd love to have you on for. You want me. Oh, <laughs> I have your number, give so. Me your phone, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a call, Coach Lou. I'll give you a call. Hey, anytime you talk basketball, Saint John's. Yes, Good. Coach. All right, Coach Lou. I want you to take care and stay safe. All right. I mean, I will. Thank you. No problem, Bye-bye Coach. Bye bye.